Let's get this party started with an amazing FCPX Timeline tutorial. FCPX Timeline is full of presets enabling creators to generate intriguing timeline graphics in their projects. You can choose from any pre-made preset and adjust any asset. Even with all this customizability, these presets are simple to use. Let's get started. The presets in this plugin contain the same controls, with a few exceptions. And we'll demonstrate how they work using this preset. Preset 1. Let's start with the Instructions window. Select the button to open the Instructions window. It will appear in the center of the screen. Each page in the instructions will contain information about what each control does. At the bottom of the window, use these previous and next controls to switch pages. When you're finished looking at the instructions, select the X to close out the window. The second instructions button will contain information about the remaining controls. Next, let's check out these camera controls. Angle of view adjusts the viewing angle of the camera. Here's a comparison. This is a fun one. Invert direction flips the animation in the opposite direction. Here's how it looks. It's like we're in a mirror room. Start position lets us select which slide to begin on. We can use this in conjunction with end position to choose how many and which slides to use in our animation. For example, we can have five as our start and end position if we want slide five to be our only slide. We'll show you the difference. So many possibilities. Start time offset lets us select how long we want to wait before the movement begins. Let's check the result. Feels different, doesn't it? End position lets us select which slide to end on. Let's see a comparison. There are many other options here to try, so check them out. End time offset lets us select how long to hold on the last slide. If we set end time offset to max, the movement before the last slide will speed up to compensate. Just look at the difference. Rotation X adjusts the camera view along the X axis. Now let's compare. Can you feel that? Rotation Y shifts the camera view along the Y axis. Let's see the result. Amazing, right? Rotation Z rotates the camera view along the Z axis. Now let's compare. And look at that thing go. Animation smoothness gives the movement a smoother approach. Let's see what that looks like. Wow, what a big difference. Now we'll navigate a few frames back to demonstrate the next control. Next, let's check out the timeline marker controls 
starting with Timeline Offset Position X. Timeline Offset Position X adjusts the horizontal position of the line. Let's see it in action. How interesting. Now let's look at these next controls. Timeline Offset Position Y determines the vertical position of the line. Here's what that looks like. The difference is obvious. On Off lets us toggle the line visibility on or off. Let's see how it looks with this change. Feels different, doesn't it? Start line determines if the line will start at the edge of the screen, fill up the screen, or begin moving in the center. We'll go with this one. Let's take a look. It's a different feeling. Now, we'll move a few frames forward. End line determines if the line will end in the center of the screen or the edge of the screen. Here's a comparison. Look at it go. The color can be changed with the color well. Blend mode determines how the layer will blend with the other layers. We'll go with this one. Notice the difference. Next, let's move on to the replicator controls. These pertain to the marker dot on each slide. On off lets us toggle the visibility of the graphic on or off. Let's see what that looks like. Notice the clear difference. The color can be changed with the color well. Blend mode determines how the layer will blend with the other layers. We'll choose overlay. As you can see, it's a pretty subtle difference. Scale X adjusts the horizontal size of the shape. Isn't that neat? Scale Y adjusts the vertical size of the shape. Notice the change in the viewer. Next, let's check out the Timeline Content Controls. Position Guide shows us the boundaries of each slide with these highlights. Let's see how it works. Isn't that neat? Spread determines how much distance there is between each slide. Here's how it looks set to the max. Big difference, right? Now let's look at the number controls. Start value lets us change this number, which is intended as the year your timeline begins on. Let's see it in action. Amazing. Increment offset changes how many years are added in each following slide. Now let's compare the before and after. Pretty neat, huh? Next, let's look at the media group controls. We have one media group per slide, and their controls are identical. So we'll demonstrate how to use the controls for the first slide. And to keep things simple, we'll make this slide our first and last one, to isolate it for the example. 
Let's move on to the media controls. On off toggles the visibility of the entire layer. Notice the difference? Edit mode hides the layer effects temporarily and lets us isolate just the item we want to edit. For example, if we select edit text A, we'll be able to select this text on screen and adjust it manually. And don't forget to check out the rest of the options. Order adjusts the order that you want the media groups to be arranged on the timeline. So if we select two, this media group will apply to the second slide. But we want it to apply to our first slide, so we'll set it back to one. On off toggles the visibility of the drop zone on or off. Notice the clear difference. With the drop zone, we can upload media to show in the background of the slide. We'll select this photo. Clone on off toggles the visibility of the clone layer. Pan lets us adjust the position of the media horizontally or vertically. Look at it go! Scale adjusts the size of the media in the drop zone. Position allows us to move the media horizontally or vertically. Angle determines the angle of the media. Scale adjusts the size of the drop zone. Next, after that, is Clone Controls. This functions more as a design element, so play around with it until it looks good. Clone On Off toggles the visibility of the clone layer. Feels different, doesn't it? Scale Y just the vertical size of the preset. X position adjusts the horizontal position of the media in the clone layer. Y position determines the vertical position of the media in the clone layer. Now let's move on to the text options. On off lets us toggle the first text layer visibility. We can input any text we want into this text box. Slant adjusts how far the text will skew diagonally. Blend mode determines how the layer will blend with the other layers. We'll choose overlay. What a cool change. Try out the other options as well and have fun with it. We can adjust the next line of text as well. On off toggles the text visibility. We can input any text we want into this text box. Next, we can adjust the margins, which are mainly important for large bodies of text. Left margin adjusts where the left boundary is for the text. Right margin determines the right boundary for the text. Top margin controls the top boundary for the text. Also note that the value can go beyond this number if you type the value manually or drag on it. So play around with it until you get the desired result. Bottom margin dictates the bottom boundary for the text. Slant adjusts how far the media will skew diagonally. Blend mode determines how the layer will blend with the other layers. Next, let's look at the number controls. On off toggles the text visibility. What a difference! Position allows us to move the preset horizontally or vertically.
text fonts, determines the font and style of the text. The color can be changed with the color well. Size determines the scale of the text. Slant adjusts how far the media will skew diagonally. Blend mode determines how the layer will blend with the other layers. Next, let's look at the 3D controls. Text depth controls how close or far away the text is. We can do this for text A and text B. as well as the numbers. And the drop zone. The other slides may have additional controls. The color can be changed with the color well. and width determines the thickness of the shape. Height dictates the height of the shape. X offsets adjust the horizontal position of the shape. Y offset adjusts the vertical position of the shape. Next, let's check out the environment controls. First, we'll select these controls, and now we'll scroll all the way down. And we'll move our playhead to better visualize the effects of these options. Now let's check out the environment controls. Environment guide shows us the boundaries of the 3D background and foreground using these colored rectangles. We'll keep it on as we adjust these next controls for the foreground. On-off toggles the visibility of the 3D foreground effects. Depth controls how close or far away the effect is. Next, let's look at the 2D foreground controls. On-off toggles the visibility of the vignette effect. Next, we can use the gradient control to change the gradient color of the drop zone fill effect. For the vignette, in case you're not sure how to use gradients, be sure to check out the link to our gradient tutorial in the description below. Blend mode determines how the layer will blend with the other layers. Next, let's move on to the 3D background controls. On-off toggles the visibility of the 3D background effects. Depth controls how close or far away the effect is. Next, let's look at the 2D background controls. Style lets us choose whether we would like the background to be a gradient or if we want the background to be whatever is underneath the title layer. For example, if we wanted to place our own footage as the background, here's an example. If we set it to gradient, we'll enable the gradient background and we can use the gradient control to change the gradient color. In case you're not sure how to use gradients, be sure to check out the link to our gradient tutorial in the description below. There's so many ways to customize this effect. And now you're an expert on how to use this plugin.